and condition. Our victim energy brings more of the same. You want more victim? Great. Focus on victim. You'll get more victim. You'll get more victim experiences showing up in your life. You'll get, you'll get to be a victim. And, and you may even, well, victimize those people around you. Do you want more victim in your life? Do you want to feel powerless with no possibility? No problem. You can do that if you want. It's your choice. It's really OK, and it, and it really is up to you. It's up to me. It's up to each of us. We can choose powerlessness, or we can choose empowered. We can choose impossibility, or we can choose possibility. We can choose hate. Or we can choose love. So, OK, back to that uh, bright blue Sunday morning that I talked about here at the sanctuary last October. You know, the one that the God thoughts were up in the sky like clouds. You just want to reach it out and hug them. The, um, so h here we were, and it happened. All of the sudden, over the Zoom monitor that was right here, there were flashing negative images and loud rantings. You could hear it through the monitors. And our hijacked Zoom virtual patio was abused. The metaphorical blue sky just got dark. The puffy clouds flatlined. The music and laughter in the sanctuary turned to silence. Stone cold silence, and then we heard someone shout, get it off. As I recall, I was like right here at the time. Could see the monitor, could see everything. I heard, get it off. This monitor that normally showed our very happy Zoom family faces on it was filled with these deeply disturbing flashing photos. Someone had broken into our electronic Zoom connection and was giving us a very negative song and dance. It wasn't pretty. And by all indications, it was an emergency, it was upsetting, and it was to be feared. As I said, I, I, I was standing about right here. And for an instant, I felt deep concern and fear, no question. I certainly was not. It was not the experience that I wanted for our beloved congregation. And, and, and then I stopped. I mustered up all of the spiritual practice that I've been trained and taught by my mentors and loved ones over the years. And I looked up. I raised my eyes. And then I raised my hands. And in that instant, a question came to me. How is this happening for me? How is this happening for me? What an apparently silly question. This was an emergency. It was a bad thing. Something had to be fought and stopped. An intruder needed to be vanquished. The battle lines needed to be put in place. We would fight, dance to the death, and seize back our sanctuary. But my spiritual practice guided me to a different place, guided me to a different dance. Let me try to explain here. Um, uh, the science of mind teaches us that our thoughts are powerful and that we have the power to choose our overall thought and our individual thoughts. I know that our thoughts either lift us up or they mess us up, and we have the power to choose thoughts that create our highest, best, and most fulfilling life. In fact, my practitioner practice, living in concert with life, is based on that very statement. But during this apparent emergency, I had a choice. Do I want to focus on being a victim? 
Do I want to focus on how terrible it, this experience is? Do I want to accept what's being handed to me? Do I want to choose to respond with power? Do I want to choose to respond embracing possibility? And even in the case of someone ignorantly, willfully attempting to inflict pain on our sanctuary, did I want to choose to respond with love? How is this happening for me? As I instantly considered that question, I felt my heart calm. I felt my breathing grounded. Just the question stopped my mind from spinning. And the answer came to that question, love. This is happening to allow me to stand right here for love of our beloved community. This is happening so that I can stand for the love of our digital media team so that I can stand and celebrate the love of our Zoom team. And even love for the person intruding our pre-service virtual patio. And that surprised me. But it also freed me at the same time. In the eye of the storm, there was calm. I knew in that moment that nothing could intrude on our sanctuary, this physical space, or our spiritual awareness, our consciousness of sanctuary. We are at home here, and there is love present here, always. Full stop, end of story. In religious science, we have a phrase, treat and move your feet. This means to use both affirmative prayer and inspired human action to take steps forward in God's grace. Dr. Mark likes to say, we trust in God and we tie our camel. I began to instantly play, pray while I jumped off the platform with a kind of a new calm in my face, a new spring in my step, and I was grateful I didn't fall off the platform at the same time. I went to work. I was immediately treating for love, and I was moving my feet to ease the flashing experience away from our congregation. Our team of service experts did what needed to be done. We used creative resources to accomplish and redirect this apparent evil. And we allowed the interruption to leave us. For me, in the spirit of love. Rather than succumbing to that appearance of evil, I asked the question, how is this happening for me? And how is this happening for us? We've got to teach ourselves to ask this question every time there is some blame or shame or regret. How is this happening for me? Every time something doesn't go the way we want it to go or hoped it would go. Every time our response is less than we had hoped for. We can stop that spinning of our concerns and take a breath just by asking, how is this happening for me? Even when tragedies take place, in our lives, we can still feel our feelings and honor our, re our human response and experience the humanity of that apparent negative situation. But while we are doing this, we can ask. We can also consider, just for a second, how is this happening for me? Now, you, you might still be asking, why am I asking, how is this happening for me? To, uh, make it clearer, please. Three reasons. One, you ask, how is this happening for me to stop your spinning brain, that monkey mind that goes? Two, to spiritually open to the possibility 
that your perception is your choice. And three, the big number three, to align your life experience the way that serves you best, uplifts you, prospers you, engages you, empowers you, and everybody around you. Music is a big part of my life. Music, it tickles, it touches, it, it ignites, it inspires, it's creative. <laughs> it heightens our human experience. Music has like the sacred vibration for me. So when I work one-on-one -on -one with folks and, and there's a surefire way to break a train of negative thinking that the surefire way is to play that person a song that they really, really like. Within seconds, we'll be dancing. Dancing to the music. Dancing to the music. When we get back to business, we look at that whole new, that whole condition with a whole new point of view. There is music to life. Sometimes it's soothing and sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's rocking and hard. Sometimes you like the music of life and sometimes you hate it. In recent weeks, though, Dr. Mark has encouraged us to resist not evil. Don't engage in a fight with evil. Don't push against evil. In the Bible, Matthew quotes Jesus in chapter 5. He says, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I will tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let them have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him what he asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. Matthew then continues that you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. I don't know, if, 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 if evil is a kind of music, I hear it as a, a jarring, dissonant, rough on the ears kind of music. It's hard music to listen to and even harder to dance to the music of evil. Like I said, I come from the disco era. Don't hold it against me. It, it gave me energy, it gave me joy, and it gave me a white jumpsuit. <laughs> Evil to me is, is like dancing to one of those lesser favorite types of music. It's not fun. It's not, in, in, it's not instinctual. It's, it's not a dance that my body easily goes through, but I, I do try to dance in line with it. Tonight, I encourage you not only to dance with the music that's easy and joyful, but dance with the music that is rough and uncomfortable. Flow with life, not just the good, but also the not so good. Don't fight against what you don't want. Stand for what you do want. Don't fight against hate. Stand for love. And when you find yourself dancing with the devil, recognize where you are who you're dancing with, and sweetly use the energies to express God qualities, not vanquish the enemy. It's like the, the dance-like quality of you know, Tai Chi, that Chinese martial art. I don't know Tai Chi. I'm just giving you a visual right here. <laughs> tai Chi is the practice of appropriate change in response to outside forces. This is the good part, of yielding to and engaging an attack rather than meeting it with opposing force. So you take the attack with you and engage with it using its energy 
to flow by you instead of pushing against it, instead of engaging in a negative way with it. This is a, considered an important step toward self-defense. Dance with evil as a form of self-defense. But how? how? How do I remember? How do I remember to ask, how is this happening for me? OK, so he, when you're in the midst of an, of an emergency, a crisis, um, a bad, rough, or jarring time, the ability to stop and adjust your perspective by asking, how is this happening for me, is strengthened by your daily practice. Your daily practice, your spiritual practice, is the key. That meditation that proves to you that your thoughts are not who you are, that you're bigger than your thoughts, grander than your thoughts, that you're, we, we are greater than our thinking. We're greater than our thoughts. Dr. Holmes tells us the, the entire problem of limitation, evil, suffering, and uncertainty is not God-ordained, but it's the result of ignorance. It's been written that the truth shall make us free, provided we know the truth. And we note that the evolution of man's consciousness brings with it the acquisition of new powers and higher possibilities. All from the idea that this is happening for me, for us. Through our spiritual practice, we can learn this dance with all the music of life. We can ingrain our thinking with positive choices. We can practice asking questions instead of judging. We can conclude that God is always present with us, for us, and through us. So I would like to finish our, our, our moment here with a, a moving tribute to something that comes from my past. We'll, we'll do a, a bit of, an, of a, an affirmation, and it goes like this. Please repeat after me. Bum, 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 ba dum, bum, 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 bum. Bum, ba dum, bum, 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 ba dum, bum, 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 ba dum, bum, 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 bum. Dance to the music. Dance to the music. Dance to the music. Dance to the music, come on in here. Dance to the music, on your feet please. Dance to the music, one more time. Dance to the music, ba da ba da. Dance to the music and take it down. Bum bum, bum ba dum bum bum, bum 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 bum, bum ba dum bum bum, bum 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 bum. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> yeah, another Wednesday night when you got somebody singing dance to the music at the podium. <laughs> let's, let's settle in for a, a, a moment. That's my heart. Bum, 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 ba -dum, bum, bum. Let's settle into a bit of a guided meditation. Sit quietly with your feet on the floor. If you're at home, in your safe home sanctuary, as you feel comfortable, close your eyes and bring your awareness to that breathing. Breathing in and breathing out. Listen to the tone and feel the vibration of that breath, breathing in and out. As you're breathing in, allow your feelings to feel. Allow your body to have sensations. And allow your thoughts to come in, whether they be laundry lists or complaints or celebrations, whatever your thoughts are. Keep breathing gently. 
bring your awareness to these thoughts, these sensations, these experiences. Keep breathing and bring your awareness, your whole consciousness up into that deep blue sky with those puffy clouds like God thoughts that you just want to run and hug and look down at your thinking, look down at your feelings, look down at your breathing, breathing in and breathing out. Allow this blue sky awareness to be the consideration of your higher self. Call to mind some seemingly lightly negative experience from your past and gently see yourself in that lightly, light, gentle experience of negative. And in that moment, see yourself asking, how is this happening for me? Notice how you feel. Ask yourself, how is the feeling happening for me? See yourself gently in that moment, dancing in the situation. Don't worry, no one can see you dance. You can dance like no one's watching. And breathe in. Breathe out and celebrate even the consideration that something not so fun could be happening for your highest and best good. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Namaste. And now we'll conclude this experiential with the spiritual mind treatment. I recognize that there is a power, a love, a light, a beingness, a presence, a clarity, an energy, a life experience that is experiencing itself right now, and I call this somethingness God. I know that God is everywhere present, all places, all levels, all times and beyond. God, the idea of this infinite goodness, experiencing itself in, through, and as each one of us, joyously, rambunctiously, calmly, sweetly. And I speak this word for each one of us, knowing that we experience the unchangeable nature of spirit. I deeply feel, I sense, and I know that each of us, each one in this service, in any form, the this, this spirit is that which is eternal and unchangeable, and it unfolds infinitely. Spirit's love is here and now and forget forever, transcending time. Spirit, spirit's law is here and now, trans transcending space. Spirit guides constantly, guards unflinchingly, and comforts eternally. Science of mind states that health has always been ours. Abundance has always been ours. Happiness and peace have always been ours. They are ours now. And they are the very essence and truth of our being. That word of God speaks through its very own deep desire to create expression. That creative expression, God's deep desire to express through all facets of divine right action 
perfect creation, divine right employment. I speak this word and celebrate for all in the sound of this voice, in their sanctuary, in this sanctuary, and even those absent loved ones, that inner calling to serve the universe through perfect creative expression, perfect creative work, perfect career, creative service in honor of all the ever-changing consciousness in God's good. Dr. Holmes tells us that we should not expect to give a treatment today for prosperity and have a million dollars tomorrow. Dr. Holmes stresses that little by little we can unfold our consciousness through the acquisition of greater and still greater mental equivalence for prosperity until at last we are made free. We are made free in our loving relationships in this quiet moment, re rejoicing that all of the loving relationships are unfolding perfectly in our life and the lives of people all around us. This love is full and rich and God loves this love and this love is God. I take this moment to celebrate and encourage and hold space for our individual intentions to bring guidance and clarity. Let us take these seconds for our own personal intentions. And holding that intention to our heart, we declare together, I accept this truth for myself and all beings everywhere. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. I give great thanks for this prayer. I give great thanks for the ability to pray this word inspired by Dr. Holmes. I give great thanks for this magnificent sanctuary that is always expressing love, a love which cannot be diminished, but only grows and grows as the human time experience goes on. I give thanks for all of the beings that come together in this idea of church, in this idea of beloved community, to experience and express love, to dance with that love, to dance with that music of love. And I release this word into that magnificent consciousness of love, knowing that God responds, principle responds perfectly, perhaps mysteriously, magically, a miracle but I have faith that it is done, and so it is done. And together we say, Amen.
Amen. <laughs> thank you, Tina, and thank you, Dean. Oh, okay. I'm dancing to the music. <laughs> well, this is the time in our service for our, our affirmative giving. So for those of you who are here in the sanctuary, we have donation boxes uh, in the foyer as you exit where you can place your donations. Uh, for those of you who are joining us online, so sorry we don't have the Facebook folks, but we hope you found your way to Zoom and are with us um, enjoying that amazing talk um, on Zoom. So how can you give? Uh, so first of all, you can call right after the service to the church office. We'll be here for about 15 minutes to take your donations over the phone via credit or debit card. Or you can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give. And that allows you to either make a one-time donation or set up recurring donations. Or you can text the word give to area code 818 Four five seven, three four one nine. However, you are choosing to support us. Just know how grateful we are that you continue to join us and support this community, so we can continue to support you. And with that, let's hold our gifts to our hearts, our intentions of putting good out there into the world, as we say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. So as we bring this service to a close, I want to first of all say thank you to everyone who is of service to us this evening out there in virtual land. Uh, thank you to practitioners Gail Pallott and Liz Racy for holding vigil for us. Um, Melissa Allen, uh, I don't know if we got, did we ever get Facebook live online? We did. Okay, well, Melissa, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> our Zoom support, Robin Wolford, who's our NHCRS host, Brenda Jordan, who's the Zoom host, and Jim Reimers, our Zoom associate. And uh, Ray, I guess you're not Zoom supporting today because you're here in the sanctuary with us. But thank you to all of you out there uh, for allowing us to reach people virtually. Here in the sanctuary, as always, thank you, Adam, back there, <laughs> making sure that we are seen and heard up here. <laughs> Greeting and ushering this evening our wonderful Colleen Butler and Terry Prince. Thank you. <laughs> our sanctuary team, Doreen Remo, Nikki Svara, 
Mark Crowell, and Blair Thompson. Thanks to all of you. <laughs> and once again, to our beautiful, wonderful <laughs> Tina Meeks, the love, it, the love affair continues. It, you know, just always, it goes on and on and on. And uh, Tina's music is available on iTunes for those of you who want to get more of that beautiful voice. And of course, Sam, as always. <laughs> Oh, God, don't you love the guy who did the opening prayer? <laughs> okay, but once again, to our guest speaker this evening, Dean. <laughs> the music was flowing through you, my friend. <laughs> and thank you to just all of you who've joined us here in the sanctuary and virtually. So, once again, um, for those of you who are watching us uh, virtually, donations over the phone, uh, calling the church after service, 818-762-7566 is the number. nhcrs.org forward slash give takes you to the website, uh, the page to do your donations, or texting 818, uh, the word give, pardon me, to 818 Four five seven, three four one nine. Also, just a reminder: uh, a free way that you can um, support the church if you sm sen uh, sign up for smile.amazon.com and make NHCRS the recipient. Um, doesn't cost you anything, but as you make purchases, money comes to the church. So, I'm surprised what I saw at the end of the year how much just out of my purchases. Um, came to North Hollywood, it felt good. So um, please know that prayer with a practitioner is available via Zoom after service. So uh, anyone in the sanctuary, if you're needing prayer, um, just uh, drop your prayer requests in our boxes and just indicate that you would like a call back from a practitioner and we will um, make sure someone calls you and prays with you. You can email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or call the church office and option four allows you to leave a voicemail message with your prayer request. So next Wednesday evening, same time, same place here or on Zoom and Facebook Live, uh, we invite you to join us for a uh, service with our guest speaker practitioner, Suze Webster, uh, joined by me. And Sue's topic is brain freeze, shift, alt, delete. <laughs> Does anyone remember that? I still do that. Yeah, right? Except it's control, alt, delete now, right? <laughs> so uh, that should be a lot of fun. Our Abundance Workshop 2021, which uh, we also entitle a Science of Mind Tune-Up for a Happy Life with Dr. Mark Vieira via Zoom. So our last class will be this coming Tuesday or next Tuesday. That's right, we're not Sunday right now, we're Wednesday, we're almost a week away. Uh, so next Tuesday, 7 to 8.30 p.m. Um, each class is self-contained, so if you haven't had any of the other classes, you can still join. Uh, just go to our website to sign up. The cost is responsible giving, and the book that they're working with is the Abundance Book by John Randall Price. So again, nhcrs.org to sign up for that. Our grief support group, facilitated by our wonderful practitioner, Carol Winokur, meets this Sunday at 1 p.m. on Zoom. All are welcome. Our youth church reopens on August 15th. So things are still moving forward, and we're so excited to welcome our youth ages 3 through 18 back to the church beginning Sunday, August 15th, and we'll have the youth church open for our 9.45 a.m. service, and children uh, under three are welcome to join in the mommy, daddy, and me room. And our in-person attendance continues on Sundays and Wednesdays, and of course, we love to have you come here, but of course, we'll also continue broadcasting on or streaming, I guess is the right term, on Facebook Live and Zoom. Um, either way, just know that it's wonderful to see those of you who can be here 
in person. Zoom virtual patio, you can continue to connect with your fellow congregants on Zoom before and after service, uh, 20 minutes before, and then hang out afterward on both uh, Sundays and Wednesdays. Our men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 on Zoom, and all men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation continues every morning, Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15 a.m. And people usually join about five, 10 minutes before to visit a little bit before. It's a wonderful experience. For information on all of this, you go to our website, which is, can you say it with me? N-H-C-R-S dot org. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. And on the website, you can also sign up for our weekly blasts and monthly newsletters. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to our wonderful Dean Regan to close us out in prayer, and Tina, who will come up and close us out with music. <laughs> How glorious it is to know this peaceful calm, this sense of quiet and joy, knowing that God is present in this service, knowing that God is united in the expression of this time together. And as we go forward into our week, each and every one of us joyously embraces that idea of love, that idea of choice, that idea of God. Each and every one of us has the choice to dance with that music of love, to see that what is happening is happening for our highest and best good, and to see it in that magnificent, encompassing perspective that good is everywhere present and good is to be found in all areas. Celebrating that good is here and now present, that love is here and now present. I know as we go into our week that we are all present in love and light that this service is blessed, has unfolded absolutely perfectly, wholly and completely and in joy in the life and the love and the spirit of God, bringing a sense of dance to the step, dance to the music of love, dance to the music of life. I'm so grateful for this dance. I'm grateful for this music. I'm grateful for this sanctuary, which is absolutely filled with love filled with light, filled with kindness, creativity, and prosperity. I'm grateful for this prayer, and I release this word knowing that it is absolutely done, and in faith, I declare it to be so, and so it is, and together we say, Amen. Say.